Thanks for making us a part of your evening. As coronavirus cases continue to rise in Montana, Governor Steve Bullock has announced new measures to combat the disease. Today, the governor issued a stay at home order beginning at mud, uh, midnight on Saturday, March 28th, running through Friday, April 10th. Under this stay at home directive, Montanans may leave their home for essential activities, including people who need to venture out for health and safety purposes. Also, people getting necessary supplies such as groceries. People in certain types of work in the state has launched a toll free hotline for businesses and employers to call with questions. And also people going outside for outdoor activities would still be allowed as long as they maintain social distancing guidelines. Also permitted to leave are those who need to take care of others. It's the second time this week Bullock has issued directives to deal with COVID-19. On Tuesday, he extended an order closing schools, dining, restaurants, bars and casinos until April 10th and also issued a directive prohibiting non-essential social and recreational gatherings inside residences of greater than 10 people if the social distance of six feet cannot be maintained. And as of this afternoon, Montana now has 90 confirmed cases. Cascade and Lewis and Clark have five cases each. Toole and Hill counties have one confirmed case each. Broadwater has two. And Gallatin County still has the most of any county in the state with 38 cases. Also this afternoon, Cascade County issuing a revised order in response to coronavirus. The county's health officer, Tricia Gardner, is extending and modifying an order of health originally set to expire tomorrow. All bars, breweries, casinos, dine-in restaurants, gyms and more are closed now through Friday, April 10th. The order also now includes tattoo and piercing shops, hair and nail salons, and spa and massage services, except those within state-licensed physical therapy or chiropractic clinics. Officials at Malmstrom Air Force Base continue to take precautions as well. They've raised the health protection condition from Charlie to Bravo on Wednesday. This change is meant to help curb the spread of COVID-19. Child and youth centers on base are closed and youth programs are canceled. In a video addressing the change, 341st Missile Wing Commander Jennifer Reeves thanked airmen for their efforts and stressed the importance of their work. Maintaining the absolute bedrock of the security of this country and our allies is unparalleled in importance. Plus, we have to keep all of us healthy and our families healthy to, to do that important mission. A release says there are no confirmed coronavirus cases at Malmstrom. We have more on the changes on base on our website. Well, once Congress approves its $2 trillion rescue package to help offset the impacts of the coronavirus outbreak in America, how will that aid be distributed to businesses in need? As MTN's Mike Dennison reports, the details aren't specifically known just yet, but that money primarily will be going through local banks and lending institutions. Kerry Hegerberg of the Montana Bankers Association says he's not sure yet when that money will be available or what the precise guidelines will be. But he does know that banks and other lending institutions will be the main vehicle for distributing business aid. We see small businesses in every community in Montana that have been shuttered for several weeks and some that are operating on a very skeleton crew. So, you know, the need is absolutely critical and banks know that they are going to be the key link to make this whole thing work and they're ready, willing and able to do that. The package before Congress has almost $400 billion for emergency loans to help businesses employing less than 500 people. If businesses use the money for certain expenses and keep their employees on, those loans could be converted to outright grants. The money will be made available through lenders certified by the Federal Small Business Administration. Hagerberg says if businesses or anyone else are wondering what the options are, they should be in touch with their lender now. If you're having trouble making payments, whether it's a consumer loan or a small business loan, to let your banker know up front, talk with your lender, let them know your circumstances, because the earlier you can work with your lender, the uh, better options you're going to have uh, looking down the road. He also expects the money to become available quickly. They want this money on the street immediately after Congress approves and appropriates the funds. So we're trying to get banks to gear up, anticipate what's going to come and help their borrowers get instant access to these emergency loans. So the aid is coming for businesses and workers. The next question, of course, will it be enough to get businesses through this downturn? Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News.
The aid package also has direct payments to 150 million citizens and increased unemployment benefits to laid off workers. Cascade County election officials say voters can expect the June 2nd primary to be an all mail ballot. This comes after Governor Bullock's request on Wednesday asking officials in each county to consider the change. Cascade County, uh, County Clerk and Recorder Rena Fontana Moore says the average age of their election judges is around 80 years old. She made the decision after considering the health of the hundreds of judges they employ for elections. Moore says they've seen anywhere from three to 5,000 voters on election day in past years and believes this is the best measure to protect everyone. To try to make sure that this is the safest way to run an election, that this is the best way to run an election, that we don't have electors fearful of coming into the facility for fear that they might contract the, the virus itself. Montana Expo Park will be set up on Election Day without polling stations. Those who lost their ballot or didn't receive one can stop by the elections office a week up until the election or stop by Exhibition Hall. Well, after days of some gloomy weather, Storm Tracker Weather Team is tracking a big improvement. Brandon Michaels joins us now. Brandon, we've seen a lot more sunshine today. Yeah, a lot of sunshine, fairly comfortable temperatures, just a little bit on the breezy side, but overall a much nicer day than yesterday. Let's take a look outside with the U.S. Bank eye cam. You can see those beautiful blue skies off in the distance, the Highwood, Highwood Mountains there. Just a couple of clouds, but more sunshine than anything else. We'll switch over to the Opportunity Bank eye cam in Helena. Kind of the same story, a cloud or two here and there, but definitely more sunshine more clear and blue skies than we're seeing uh, than clouds. As far as the winds, though, they have been strong. In fact, a little bit stronger than we were expecting, especially around Helena and Great Falls, gusting over 40 miles per hour in Great Falls and close to that in Helena with a peak gust of 37 miles per hour. As usual, up toward Cutbank in the Rocky Mountain front, a little bit windier, a 50 mile per hour gust recorded in Cutbank a little bit earlier. Winds not quite as bad tomorrow, but more sunshine in the forecast. That's what we're tracking alongside of warmer temperatures as we head through the weekend, even into early next week. We do have uh, some changes we are monitoring, though, as we head later into the week. We do have the potential for some cooler air to move in, and we're going to break all that down in more detail later in the show. Thanks, Brandon. When we come back, the High Line is coming together during tough times. See how the community of Haver is answering the call for medical supplies. Powered by the Montana Television Network. The 530 News continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. Like many medical facilities around the country, Havers Northern Montana Hospital found itself in a supply shortage, specifically face masks for patients. But as MTN's Richie Melby tells us, it's a problem quickly solved by its helpful community. On a typical day, Shannon Hagum would be tending to her business. Luxury Unleashed, a luxury pet facility on the High Line. But these days, she's putting her public relations and social media knowledge to different use. I said, what if we put together a place where we could bring all of the, the people together that have materials, that have the skill? What if we created a meeting place, which is, of course, the beauty of social media? On Saturday, March 21st, the Facebook group Help Needed to Sew Masks for Northern Montana Hospital was born. 48 hours later, we had over 220 members, and it's just... I mean, it just took off, and it's been exciting to watch. Volunteers came in the form of seamstresses and fabric donations, but cutting that fabric to the exact size necessary proved to be time-consuming. That's when Janine Cartwright Donovan, owner of JM Donovan Designs and Fine Jewelry, offered her computerized laser engraver. It can cut three different sizes, the small, the medium, and the large, enough material in one full pass in two minutes and 30 seconds versus the seamstresses having to cut those patterns. So that's where I was like, if I can expedite the process for the seamstresses, if they don't have to do the actual cutting. The Facebook group has since added 3D mask printing and now even gowns to its resume with dozens of new volunteers joining to show their support for family, friends, and neighbors facing the coronavirus crisis head on. Yeah, I'm just so grateful that there are people in our health care that put themselves on the front line to fight things like this. Really, when I saw that picture, it pretty much gave me a lump in my throat. Richie Melby, MTN News. And they're now up to 632 masks and counting since they started that Facebook page on Saturday afternoon. Well, the coronavirus pandemic has changed a lot of things we take for granted in our community, like kids being able to go to school. 
but elementary teachers in Great Falls found a creative way to see their students. MTN's Isaiah Dunk has more. When the school day ended on Friday, March 13th, teachers and staff at Valley View Elementary had no idea that it would be the last time they would see their students in the building for the foreseeable future. That weekend, Governor Steve Bullock directed public schools in Montana to close until at least March 27th. That's now been extended to April 10th, but that's not stopping elementary teachers from Great Falls Public Schools from reconnecting. On Thursday, teachers from elementary schools around Great Falls drove through their attendance zones parade style to catch a glimpse of their students. We thought, wouldn't it be nice if we just did it all at the same time district wide and really um, showed the community that that um, you know that we miss kids and that we want to see them. We thought it would be a community building thing, um, but just wanted to do something to help everybody um, feel good during this time. This has been tough for everyone. Valley View Principal Rachel Cutler said the idea came during a district principal's meeting after seeing Facebook videos of other states doing the same thing. The parade route for Valley View was about 18 miles, with parents and children alike dotting the sidewalks. The community support, I've had a lot of different people contact us um, and offer to help. I think our community is amazing and they, you know, people that are able to are wanting to reach out and support schools and kids and I think that's been not surprising because I know that that's how our community is but wonderful to see everybody kind of come together. Cutler says responding to the coronavirus pandemic has been challenging. While remote learning makes it possible to connect, not every student has the same access to technology. And it goes beyond just learning. The district has been delivering meals to all children under 18 since March 16th. Overall, parents and teachers alike have handled the fast changes with grace. It's hard for them to be able to replicate what happens every day at school, um, but they've been amazing. My staff has been incredible, and I would echo that throughout the, the district. Even speaking from a parent perspective, I've gotten a lot of contact from my own children's teachers. In Great Falls, Isaiah Dunk, MTN News. Well, skies are fairly clear and temperatures are comfortable, and we're actually going to stay this way for quite some time. We'll have the forecast up next. Now, here's your Storm Tracker weather forecast with meteorologist Brandon Michaels. Well, here in north central Montana, we're done with the gloomy weather for a little bit, and we've got clear skies all across our area. You do see a little bit more moisture, some cloud cover, even some snow showers off of the mountains to our west, but pretty much none of us have had to deal with that through the day today. We'll flip it over to the high resolution satellite, and you can see maybe just one or two little clouds, but in general, they're kind of working their way out of our area right now. We're going to be staying relatively clear through the night tonight, and in general, we've got some pretty nice weather in the forecast, at least in the short term, maybe some changes in the long term that we will talk about here as we get later into the forecast. Current temperatures, though, very comfortable. 52 right now in Jordan, 48 for Glasgow, 45 for Lewistown, 45 in Great Falls. So an improvement over where we were, uh, especially into the last weekend and uh, about normal, just a little bit below normal for this time of year. We've got some bad data at the Helena Airport, so we don't have the temperature shown uh, for there. Temperatures in general, though, warmer across the board than yesterday. Not a lot for all of us, only about two degrees for Great Falls, but places like Glasgow and Haver are significantly warmer than they were at this time yesterday, about 10 to 15 degrees warmer uh, compared to yesterday at 20 four hours ago. So what's going on here? We've had this big upper level trough in place, but it's been slowly working its way out and will continue to do so as we head through the forecast. It's been a very slow process though, but as it continues to shift away, we'll get warmer temperatures and in general nicer weather in the forecast. And this is really going to exit as we head into the day on Saturday. We see a little bit of an upper level ridge building in and that's going to bring in some very nice weather for the weekend, especially the first half of the weekend. Lots of sunshine there and uh, warmer temperatures too. A little chilly tonight with the clearer skies. Uh, fairly normal for this time year 28 for Glasgow 29 for Jordan 24 in Lewistown and about 25 degrees overnight tonight in Great Falls tomorrow's temperatures comfortable again a little bit warmer than today mainly upper 40s wouldn't be surprised if we saw a couple of 50 degree readings uh, either about 51 for the high temperature in Jordan 49 in Haver and also Great Falls and Helena coming in at 49 degrees now it has been a pretty breezy day we showed you that earlier the peak wind gusts have been over 40 miles per hour at times and I think we will have at least a little bit of a breeze tomorrow I think this model might be going a little bit too light on that I think especially toward Great Falls we could see winds closer to that 30 mile per hour mark by tomorrow afternoon now looking at future track more sunshine in the forecast for tomorrow for the most part through the night tonight. A little bit more cloud cover, potentially some patchy fog developing over uh, night and into the early morning hours tomorrow. That'll click quickly clear out through the day. So sunshine into the early afternoon as we get a little bit of heating though. We'll see a couple more clouds and a couple of higher terrain showers popping up here and there. 
but nothing all that significant. More sunshine than anything else for our Friday. Let's go through the seven day forecast now because we do have some changes coming eventually. So sunshine for Friday and Saturday temperatures by Saturday. Really, really nice. 54 degrees, a mix of sun and clouds for us on Sunday. 58 degrees, still fairly cloudy on Monday, but the temperatures are warm and then we're keeping an eye on a shot of cold air heading our way next week. Details still pretty fuzzy on that, but there's definitely the potential as that colder air swings in that our temperatures really drop off and we could see some snow there on the potential for accumulating snow even. So again, we're going to watch that very closely as we head through the next couple of days here. Looking at the seven day for Helena again, beautiful in the short term, 49 and sunny tomorrow, 55 and sunny for Saturday. Mix of sun and clouds on Sunday. Temperature is still climbing and still very nice for Monday into Tuesday. The temperature is still comfortable, but that's when that colder air starts to creep in. And as it does, we could see a little mix of rain and snow. And again, snow will be possible Wednesday into Thursday alongside those cooler temperatures. Tom. One Montana native's dream of playing professional football overseas is on hold during the COVID-19 pandemic. That story coming up later. Powered by the Montana Television Network. The 530 News continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. The COVID-19 pandemic has created headaches for U.S. citizens traveling abroad, including one Montanan who's in Germany chasing his dreams of playing professional football. For Chinook native Jake Norby, it was the chance of a lifetime. The fact that, you know, I'm still I'm getting paid and also that I'm still getting the opportunity to get my education at Northern. It's just pretty much been a blessing in disguise. The former MSU Northern linebacker gave up his senior season of football to play professionally in Germany for a season. He signed with the Cottbos Crayfish of the GFL in February. I had, I had a couple different opportunities, but uh, this one worked out the best because it's going to go right all the way up until uh, August, maybe to September, and um, that will perfectly make it so I can come back for my very last year at college and do that in person at Northern. But for now, the dream is put on hold. Norby left Montana for Germany last week before the COVID-19 pandemic had sent much of the world into lockdown. I was asking my coach before, do I need to bump up my flight? Things are getting weird. What's going on? He said, oh, we, we called the, the air, airplanes. They said everything was going to be good. So less than 12 hours after he landed in Berlin, Germany closed its borders. Shortly afterward, the crayfish suspended their season. So right now our season is actually postponed a month. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so we're just waiting for hopefully maybe if things open back up. You know, if, if they end up canceling the, the season, you know, I, I don't know where we really go from there. But uh, as of now, we had a really we have a long break in our season. Hopefully this is just going to bump everything back and take away our break. That's kind of our midseason break that we have there. So things are up in the air for Norby. And when they do resume, the former Sugar Beater state champion cannot wait. In addition to playing for the Crayfish, he will get to coach their youth development team. The first step in a lifelong dream for the aspiring teacher and coach. Probably the biggest deciding factor in revitalizing my love for the sport really as I want to be a future coach, but they'll probably give me quite a bit uh, free reign to control the defense there. So that'll be a really fun experience. And I, I just can't wait to develop uh, kids to love football. But for now, he waits and enjoys the experience of a new adventure in a new country. I, I try to see a silver lining in everything. And mm -hmm. I mean, I guess right now, you know, I'm on quarantine, so I'm not out blowing my money in Italy and, and you know, all these cities around Germany. So right now we're kind of just hunkered down and saving money and just waiting for it to pass, hopefully. Norby is still a full-time student at MSU Northern, so he's got a full slate of online classes to keep him busy during the day, but uh, all he can do in his free time is go to the gym at the team facility, which lies empty, and lift weights and prepare for a season that may or may not come. Reporting from my home, Tom Wiley, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Tom. The Great Falls Symphony has teamed up with the United Way of Cascade County to raise money for a COVID-19 response and recovery fund. The donations made to the fund will go towards local service organizations to help with increased demand for food, homeless support, and other resources for families in our community. From now until the end of April, people who donate $250 will get two tickets to a Great Falls Symphony concert next season. For details on how to make a donation, you can find this story on our website. And we're back right after this with a final look at your forecast.
No, nope. well, we do have fairly nice weather in the forecast in the short term. Fairly nice night tonight. Mostly clear skies, a little bit of cloud cover developing by tomorrow morning. Most of us ending up in the 20s for our overnight lows. Clearing right back out tomorrow, though. Lots of sunshine in the forecast. Mid to upper 40s for our high temperatures. Well, we end tonight with a <laughs> cute baby animal for you. This is COVID. Born in Mexico 11 days ago, but far from being a disease, he's a tender little Bengal tiger that came to light in a private zoo dedicated to rescuing animals from circuses and exotic private collections. His mother is an eight-year-old tigress who was saved and later operated on for a hip injury. COVID was born March 14th in the morning to be part of the new generations of cats that have been born in the shelter, which has been operating for more than two decades in the southeastern state of Veracruz. Love it. All right, COVID. <laughs> There you go. Memorable Marked night. for his time. That's right. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you on the CW at 9 and back here at 10. Good night.